that if you run the clock backward, there was a time when all that mass, all that energy was packed into such a small volume that um, it was uh, the entire universe was a giant fireball. Then, then something like that must have had um, some lasting impact that you could measure. And in fact, there was. And that's what your textbook describes in section 29.4, the cosmic microwave background. This is um, quite possibly one of the strongest evidence for the Big Bang, um, the, our model of the Big Bang cosmology. That, um, so, so just to briefly summarize, this was uh, existence of what we now call cosmic microwave background that was actually predicted by the, um, by the same scientists who did the work on the other thing that supports the Big Bang model. Uh, let me see if this uh, section of the textbook mentions them by name. Um, Alpha was one of the people, uh, Alpha and Gamma actually, Alpha and Gamma were the people who worked on the model of uh, what's known as a Big Bang nucleosynthesis um, to, um, to work out, okay, what are the isotopical abundances um, of interstellar gas and other stuff uh, if we start out with this Big Bang idea. And uh, in fact, let me just uh, search for alpha, beta, gamma paper. It, that's the nickname for the paper that they published. <laughs> um, so, so they are the uh, cosmologists, nuclear physicists who worked on this model of um, Big Bang nuclear synthesis that explains the hydrogen and helium abundances that we observe. And um, and one of the things that they realized as they were working on this was if the universe was um, so hot um, that, the, that there was a fusion going on, nuclear fusion going on at the beginning, then as, as the universe expanded and cooled, that all that radiation uh, from that earlier time in the universe, it wouldn't simply go away. Uh, the, it would be red shifted. It would the wavelengths will stretch out, but it'll still be there. So they predicted that um, that yeah, the universe must be radiating like black body at some temperature. Um, this is the uh, the moment when the universe became transparent when uh, electron could stay with the proton, you know, neutral hydrogen. This is uh, what one of your key terms describes as the photon decoupling time. Um, so this uh, black body with the surface temperature of something close to our sun, uh, as the universe continues to expand, uh, this uh, effective temperature would be going down. So that they predicted it, that they predicted that this glow from the early fireball would now be at some radio wavelengths. Now, and then, um, and then no one did anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this happens a lot in science, you know. Uh, I, I come from experimental background, so I like to think that we experimentalists do the hard work. Theorists come up with a lot of fun ideas that are hard to test and leave the hard work to other people. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, but so, you know, it's one thing to predict it. And I think back then they didn't have quite um, the precise microwave uh, equipment that they needed to actually look for it. So. Nothing's been done, as it says, over the years, the prediction was forgotten. So the discovery of cosmic microwave background itself was an accidental discovery. It was discovered by these people who are actually trying to do other measurements <laughs> and they were plagued with some unexpected background noise. Like a good experimentalist, they investigated it and then they uh, came to a conclusion that that's a real signal coming from everywhere in the universe. And um, 
And once they realize it, then, then some people dug through the literature and realized that, um, that um, yeah, yeah. So, so the, your textbook tells this story here. So, uh, so they all connected the dots now. This was the, the afterglow of the Big Bang, the, from the time when the universe was a hot fireball that, um, that's now, uh, uh, that's now all been extremely red shifted all the way from feasible wavelengths to the, uh, to the uh, microwave wavelengths. And so this cosmic microwave background radiation is the evidence that there was a time uh, in the distant past when the entire universe was basically a giant ball of plasma, giant hot ball of plasma. And um, and and what and this this uh, concretely measurable thing is the the after uh, is the red shifted version of that. So that's one that's one supporting evidence for this uh, uh, Big Bang cosmological model. The model predicts that there was an earlier time in the universe when it was much much hotter and the conditions are vastly different. And this is the observational evidence that supports that prediction of the model. So, so cosmic microwave background is a quite important um, piece of our cosmology and uh, testing of any new ideas adjustment to our cosmology. So I think your textbook describes the more and more precise modern measurement of the cosmic microwave background um, with the satellite. COBE is one of the earlier uh, measurements that detected the first of these an, um, anisotropies uh, um, fluctuations within a uh, almost a perfectly uniform CMB background. And um, I think there was a Nobel Prize maybe 10 years ago. It might have been to the person who led the Kobe project or WMAP, I forget. Um, but so we've done very precise measurements of these irregularities, quantum fluctuations of the CMB background. And this is what we think seeded the initial galaxies. Um, the places that were denser, that's where uh, more mass came around to form the first galaxies and stars and um, the places that had less um, dense materials, that's where um, th that became void today. And so, so that's one. Um, and the other model is, um, so other big piece of evidence for the, the Big Bang cosmology is I think your textbook covers it under section 29.3, the beginning of the universe. So this is describing the first few seconds of the universe and what they describe here uh, with, uh, uh, with the, the, the work of Gamo, he's the famous guy, Alpha, when he did this work, he was a graduate student. Um, uh, what they worked on were the, the processes that, uh, that might have happened in the early universe when it was hot enough for there to be a nuclear fusion just to throughout the entire universe. Not just in the course of stars, but throughout the entire universe, it was hot and dense enough for there to be a fusion of hydrogen into deuterium and then deuterium into helium. And, uh, and they worked out, um, worked out what these uh, isotope abundances might be. And, um, and the amount of, um, and, 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 and this uh, actually explained one of the great mysteries in astronomy, which is that amount of helium that we observe in the interstellar gas in various places is within the outer layers of the sun. It's uh, way more than what we could expect. If, if uh, all the helium we see were coming from stellar fusion, then there's just too much. And uh, they worked out this calculation and um, what they have done is, yeah, let's see here. Uh, here it is, uh, this is the punchline. We estimate that 10 times more helium was produced in the first four minutes of the universe than in all the generation of stars in the next last next last uh, 10 to 15 billion years. So, 
So this is uh, what my, um, so this is the seminal paper that worked it out. And today we call it a Big Bang nuclear synthesis. And uh, both of the observation of the isotopic abundance, it constrains some of the parameters of the early um, years of the universe. And it, so it, it serves multiple roles. Uh, but uh, the big picture of that, um, how this, exp this, uh, is um, this is consistent with the uh, the universe that we, model of a win, model of the universe that we would build starting from the idea of the expanding universe that in the very early days when it was hot and dense um, you could have um, fusion of hydrogen into helium now as the universe expands at some point in time universe has expanded enough, cooled enough that this fusion could no longer occur and uh, limits the so it limits the production of isotopes into the lightest isotopes, um, starting from hydrogen, what we start with, to helium and to some trace amounts of lithium. And before um, elements heavier than these could be produced, universe already expanded too far and no more nuclear fusion was occurring except um, until um, stars formed. And in the core of the stars is when heavier, iso heavier elements form. So, so this is uh, a um, thing that I would just uh, uh, summarize as a Big Bang nuclear synthesis. That's, uh, um, that's the second big piece that observational piece because these isotope abundances are something that we can measure um, and we can compare that with the model calculations and and it fits and um, so this is the other piece of evidence for um, our model or the big bang model 